Forgive me. I actually respect this. That he actually has lost money on a deal, and he's made money on a deal. He's made money for his investors on deals, and so he's developed a strong respect relationship around what real estate means. That's why he's presenting. And he helps to have some good information. All right, Stephen, take it away. How long do you need? 30 I'm minutes? I'm going to turn you on the timer, so you can yell at myself when I'm over, I guess. Oh, I can't get it in the camera, so I can't get it in the <coughs> Sorry. Um, so, Todd and myself are on the Atlanta Empire Real Estate Investment Club. Uh, Matthew in the back is our new executive assistant. He's also kind of an apprentice by trying to join in. He's a behavior himself, so it should be really interesting. This is the first time I've tried to do this. Um, <laughs> I've been in this business since 2002, started in title, was a delivery driver, I was a guy on the phone with for buyers of the trustee sale, um, bought properties myself, bought enough of them to lose six figures when they all went sideways, um, sucked it up, pushed the downturn, worked for one of the largest REO offices in the Alien Empire, doing acquisition for other investors, and essentially by proxy, they taught me why I made all my, my mistakes. Um, uh, between stuff I partnered on, managed, whatever the case may be, uh, probably done 150 plus flips. Um, I've probably walked through over 10,000 homes. I've probably done just as many deal analysis. So I've done this for a while. Uh, you know, after this long, we were able to sort of create a system, which is what we're doing now with Community Restoration Group trying to teach what, what we've learned over time. We used to do hard money, if anybody's met us before through Rehab Loan Group. Uh, we switched to a joint venture platform because everybody kept asking us to. You don't start a business until somebody asks you to. Enough people told us they didn't want to put any money down a deal, so that's what we do now. It's weird having these cable things in my head. <laughs> Excuse me if I sound a little hoarse. I'm still getting over a pretty gnarly flu. Um, if my energy's a little zapped and you used to me going 100 miles an hour, uh, maybe you can actually understand me now because I have to slow down. Uh, the, the, the only thing we didn't comment on, Christina usually talks about the club, uh, the investment club meets the fourth Wednesday at the Mission Inn in Riverside. This month will be on a Monday, uh, this coming Monday the 21st, just because of the Thanksgiving holiday. And the next month we're going to try and do the even better than Phoebe Christmas party with open bar and food. Really? So at the uh, Crestmore Manor Riverside. So uh, if I, it's the, that's on December 15th. That's our only event for the month of December. If you're interested, that's on meetup.com on the, under the Inland Empire Real Estate Investment Club. You guys can uh, come out to that. We're going to try and like, I want a mean as big as a Phoebe mean, but full bar and food. <laughs> uh, today's presentation is on how to start buying and flipping homes in Southern California today. You know, we... Depending on how you feel about the market, uh, I feel really comfortable being in short-term stuff right now. I think Christina's sort of in the same boat. We've talked about being in, everything's really short-term. We're not exactly buying rentals for decades to come. You know, we're, we're, uh, we're flipping because the market has sort of left the investment world and gone into speculation. And so anything beyond a short-term, less than a year, preferably less than six-month run, is probably not the greatest investment in Southern California. Uh, got some basics at the beginning of this. Most of this is due diligence. It's like how to analyze a deal. All of this will be available afterwards. There's a whole bunch of stuff in a giant email we send out. Um, it's all free. There's no, no garbage attached to it. Uh, it's a community restoration group. That's the company. Uh, I don't know, we just made it up. Um, Todd said this is the name, and we, we're branding people, so it ended up on a shirt. And then we had a... Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jack? Which one? The guy who did the logo. Oh, yeah, Jack. Jack, one of our club members designed it for us. It's kind of cool, like everybody did internally. Okay, so how am I going to teach you as a practice in one hour? I'm not. I'm just going to teach due diligence. Like, there's no way, regardless of the fifty, hundred thousand dollars you pay for a seminar in an hour, a weekend, months of weekends you can learn this business you just have to do it so the goal of this presentation is to get you to a point where we have a nice succinct package for a partner or a lender that looks the way they would want to see it because i've seen some ugly lending packages ah. 
Okay, so I start the basics, start the excuses, don't, can't, won't. I have these business party meetings with people and I get a lot of this. So I can't, I don't, I want, and, like, and I'm so sick of hearing all the objections people put in front of them. I would just like to get that out of the way. If in your mind you've already decided that you can't do whatever the heck I'm talking about, go home. <laughs> and I'm kind of a pain, pain in the ass. So like if, if I sound like I don't care, I really don't care if you like my presentation and I don't care if you believe me. Like there's a lot of people I've helped make a lot of money, so I just don't care if you believe what I'm saying. Um, I really want to do this, but I don't have the time. Uh, in a lot of these uh, business planning meetings, I get that all the time, and then I have them do, do, do this, which is, I know you can't see it very well because the light's pretty bright in here, but I have people put all of their hard commitments on a calendar. If you have not put all of your hard commitments on a calendar, like when you go to sleep, when you wake up, when you take the kids to school, you got yoga, the gym that I'm not going to, whatever the case may be, <laughs> um, if you, haven't, if you haven't done that uh, and figure out how much time you actually have, you need to do that. I don't, ha uh, I don't have a company set up yet. If somebody's convinced you, you need an LLC or some other garbage that you want to put in, in your own way, please don't wait to start an LLC to look to do real estate. You don't need an entity. You don't need an entity to be made money. Stop trying to prevent taxes on money you don't have. <laughs> uh, but I don't know where to start. So, if you go to this domain, www.crg.email, you can download this presentation along with the spreadsheet. We use every single day to analyze deals. All the formulas are open. You can steal all my stuff and do what you want with it. It's not branded. You can use it with anybody. Um, I've got my 40 ways to find a deal presentation in there. I'm going to add to at some point. It's a bunch of ways to find property, even though the problem isn't finding the deal. The problem is analyzing the deal. You don't know how to analyze it. Um, we have pre-qualified form, where to get proof of funds, sample contracts, um, how to share your deal with us or other investors. Uh, it's, it's all in there. Mm. I've only done this presentation like two times. I have to read off my own thing. Uh, I don't want to say to the seller, but if I sound stupid. I, I get constantly, like this objection I get all the time from people is like, I don't know what to say to these people. Like, who cares? Like, just, just ask the question, why would anybody want to sell a nice house like this? And shut up. Just stop talking. And like, they'll tell you exactly what you need to know. There are no more questions needed. Just stare. Um, how do I get discounts so I can make a profit? I don't want to rip anybody off. Um, is this a scam? Why would anybody sell their home at a lower price? Really get this a lot. Like there's, there's, there's this mentality that what you're looking to do is swindle somebody. Um, and it's not what this business is about. Uh, this business is about sharing a piece of, somebody's going to share a piece of their equity in exchange for your experience. You're saying if I take 10 to 15% of your equity, I will solve the problem that you haven't been able to solve. It's a trade. And so people really don't understand that it's just, it's a big pie, depending on if it's with a mentor, as a mentee, and a seller, or just you, know, you as an as a individual buyer, partner, and a seller. You're just taking a piece of the deal. You're not ripping them off. Uh, whether it's your network, your experience, whatever, you have something of value to offer. If you feel like you're ripping somebody off, it's because you don't see value in yourself. You need to find the value in what you do. Mm, due diligence, okay. Uh, so, got my excuses out of the way. Let's kind of dig into the due diligence. And uh, I, this presentation is all the public resources for free to get all the stuff you need to do a deal. I didn't make any of this behind a paywall or anything. All the stuff is, is publicly available to everyone. So, I know this is small. This is essentially a rundown of all the questions that you need to ask to get a deal done. Uh, and we'll go into each one by section by section, one by one. Uh, usually when I get to this part is where I start getting a lot of questions. I'm like, slow it up so I know I only have 30 minutes to try and knock this out. So if it's like an absolute burning question, you can't make it through it, uh, stop me and ask. Um, if not, uh, either way till the end, or you, can, you guys can ask me after the meeting. So first set of questions, subject property address, obviously type of property, single family, condo, whatever, square footage, lot size, beds, bath, year built, 
uh, how many stories and does it have a garage and how many stalls. And I, I've recently added uh, view and pool because those two things seem to make a big difference in value. Those are the basic property characteristics that everyone, every investor, every partner, every lender, those are, that's what they're looking for about the property. That's how they're going to, that's where they're going to start when they go to value the property you're presenting to them. So this is the public side I start with, Redfin. And I do the most obvious thing in the world, which is put the address in the search bar. I, I, I seriously, when I say I dumb this down, like it's, it's page by page with big red circles. Uh, right up there at the top, you got the beds, baths, square footage, and you're built. Right at the top of the page on, each, on, on the property you're searching. It'll have it whether or not it's for sale. Uh, you scroll down and you get the garages, type of property, how many stories, and lot size. It's all available publicly for free. I said if anybody has trouble seeing this, you can download the slides and read these later. Just know this is the basics. Uh, how to determine the valuations and balances. So there's the next concern for any partner, any lender, uh, any investor is going to be what it's worth and, and what the balances are on the existing loans or exist on the existing property. Uh, so what's the asking price, current market value, fully rehab value, cost repairs, uh, costs uh, t to, to bring it to rentable condition and cost for turnkey condition. Because there's two types of ways to repair a property, rentable and then turnkey for market, depending on the area you're in. Uh, what are the balances of the current mortgage? Are there any liens or taxes? And then what are the combined total uh, liens? So what's the asking price? Ask the seller how much you're asking for the house. Mm -hmm. And then stop talking. That's all you gotta ask. Or the agent or whoever. Seems like a, an easy question to ask, but nobody, you'd be surprised how many people don't actually ask that. What's the current ma market value of the subject property and the fully rehab value? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through a basic way to pull comps from public records. Uh, but most of it is going to be you learning how to dig into a neighborhood, evaluate a property, and compare it to the other properties. The, the main question you're asking is, would I rather buy my subject property in its current condition and in its completed condition, or this property I'm looking at and comparing it to? Comparable sales are not magic. It's not some weird math equation. It's would a buyer buy your house or another one? And if they rather buy your house than the other one, it's worth more. If they rather buy the other house than yours, it's worth less. It's not some quarter mile, half mile, one mile circumference. Most of you know that you don't want to buy in the neighborhood that's only a block away from this one. It's not like, you'd be amazed by the comps I get because people try and rationalize the deal, but they would never buy their own home that way. So basically treat it like you're buying your own house. So what I do is I start on Redfin and I search an entire zip code. Whatever the subject, the property, whatever zip code the property is in, I search the whole thing at once. So I get every single sale in that zip code. I'll open the filters. I'll choose the property type. And then I'll choose sales records in the last year. I want to see every sales record in the last year in that whole area. So it's going to give me this list over here on the uh, near right hand side of every single sale and the map is going to show them. I then zoom in to the subject property's neighborhood. Like I said, not a quarter mile, not a half mile, to the neighborhood. And then I sort the properties by square foot. And then there's a uh, little button I didn't know was here on Redfin at the bottom. It says download all comps. It's a little blue box, a little blue, little blue text box. It says download all comps. You can download everything into Excel format so you can get it off Redfin for free, it's kind of great. Then I'm going to change my settings from up here on the left, you have table or photos to photos. So I can see the pictures on the right hand side of each property. Then I'm going to scroll through them. You can just hit the little left button on each one, one by one, and try and give each property a value compared to my property, right? If I look at my property, my property is like middle of the road, like a five in the neighborhood. I want to look at each one of these and determine if it's better or worse, right? If it's like top, top notch in the neighborhood, it's 10. If it's a dairy down, it's a one. And then, you know, give everyone a score. Pretend you're an Olympian judge for a little bit. 
Uh, then you'll see this is what they look like in Excel. I realize it's really small and blurry. Um, you put the numbers in Excel next to each property, and you'll have, you'll have the ability to sort those by the score you gave it. Now, once you've done that, you should see where your property falls in line somewhere, you know, uh, and that should give you a pretty close idea of your value. What I recommend is everybody drive them. This is using the website speedyroute.com. You put all the addresses in, it'll let you bulk upload them from your Excel page, and you go drive every single comp, unless you think you're mastered valuating properties, go drive them, get to know why somebody paid more. Maybe online looks really good, and you go show up at the subject property and there's a school across the street, uh, one has a view, you didn't know it, uh, the neighbor's got 10 barking dogs and nobody wanted to buy that property, go drive all of them. The more often you do that, like I said, I've seen like 10,000 plus homes, the better you'll get at valuation. In the end, this is kind of what it looks like. Uh, the addresses, then the numbers on the side. My current, uh, with this property, it's currently a five. My ARV is an eight, and it's comparison to every single one in the neighborhood. There's no prices up here, because I don't want anybody to get caught up on value. But you're able to determine where on that list your property falls, and then look at the prices of the properties it's similar to, and value your property. You get a really close range. What's the cost of repairs to bring the property to rentable condition and to turnkey condition? I came up with a, a basic metric. You know, I'm in Pasadena. I may get like punched for this. It's probably low for Pasadena. But in the Inland Empire, even all the way out like to the 57th, these numbers work. I feel like they're conservative, but I mean, I've got some LA prices from people and it's as tight as the market's been lately. It's amazing what they charge for construction out here. Um, I have it broken down to excellent, great, good, fair, and poor condition. And then I break it down, I know it's small, but I break it down by cost per square foot to repair and rentable or turnkey in each category. So zero if it's, t if it's excellent, all the way up to $40 a square foot if it's a complete turd. Um, in LA, I know some areas can get up to about $65 a square foot on a renovation. And if you a luxury market, you can be at like $200 a square foot. But I don't deal in the luxury market because uh, if you can't do 10, you shouldn't do one. If you can't do 10 deals, 10 luxury deals, don't do one luxury deal. So this is some examples that match that chart as to what condition looks like. This is excellent. Um, perfect. This is a turnkey property. This is a flip on one of our, our uh, our loans from Rehab Loan Group. Uh, this is great. This is like, it's pretty good, but the paint on the wall is yellow and put purple cabinets in. Like it's clean, but you'd probably change it. Uh, good means somebody can move in today, but the carpet's kind of dirty. It might be, look like a five-year-old rental. Uh, fair, pink cabinets, half a kitchen, hole on the wall. It needs a lot of work. And then poor. Um, this one got much poorer after one of our borrowers left us with nothing but four walls. Can you clearly flipper? Because your fare is like my poor. Yeah. <laughs> it's because you haven't seen enough pores. <laughs> 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 when, when, when the walls just don't fit right together, you get to the world of poor that I'm used to. And that's when uh, most of those homes are built between, built between 1942 and 1950. If I could give anybody some advice, just avoid the 40s. So they're, all, they're all wartime homes. Um, unless you're very experienced in construction, you have no business touching a 1940s home. And the reason is, if, if you aren't aware of that era in history, during the war, we had no building materials. So they were scavenging them from other properties and scavenging them together. I actually bought a house where they took a chainsaw and cut a line right down the middle of it and then put it together with metal braces. And I found that out after I tore apart a meth house. It was pretty crazy, man. I, s I, s I walked up, I was like, damn. I had a $110,000 rehab budget and that went out the window. Um, what are the combined balances of other mortgages? Uh, are there any liens, taxes that need to be paid off? If yes, what's the total combined amount? Um, taxes can be found through the county uh, county page. I have that, the county tax page, I have that uh, a little later on. But there are also other taxes like IRS, state, um, 
there's a myriad of non-property related taxes that you could find that only the seller could tell you about. Also, what's the combined balance of the mortgage? Regardless of what it says it is in real list or any other public record, the mortgage could be entirely different depending on the note. So you need to ask the seller that. If there's an agent in the middle, make them do their job, go ask. Uh, by the way, I've, I've had a license for like most of my career. If I poke fun of agents, it's because I've been both a really crappy real estate agent and a really good one. Uh, does the subject property have an HOA? What's the monthly HOA fee? What's the current assessed value? What's the tax rate? Um, total annual special assessments and estimated closing date of the transaction. So does the subject property have an HOA and what is a monthly HOA? There's actually an easy way to, found, to find this. I had to find it for myself because in my entire career, I've never been able to find a good way to do this outside of guessing the MLS. Fortunately, in Redfin, and I have no idea why it shows up on this particular screen, but if you zoom into the neighborhood in question and then you click the photos tab on the right side, there's a, it reveals a box that says HOA. So if you look at like 10 properties in the neighborhood and all of them say HOA zero, there's a good chance the HOA zero, right? But if one out of four say HOA, there's probably an HOA in the area and then you gotta dig a little deeper and hope you can find more HOA info. HOA info is pretty hard to find um, without asking a seller, but that's a good way to find it 90% of the time. Uh, current assessed value of the subject property, meaning what's the tax assessor have it assessed at? What's the tax rate, meaning how much do they charge per year? And what are the total annual special assessments, assessments, which is an entirely different set of taxes that doesn't fluctuate per year. Uh, I give the links uh, to all the tax assessor sites. So you can just click on each one of them, go directly to the tax page. But this is what Riverside County's tax bill looks like. Every, every county looks a little different, but they all have the same info. Uh, what you're looking for is the assessed value, which it says net value, which is the amount. At, in this case, it's the total assessed value. There's a homeowner's exemption in this, in this case. It gives us a total net value. You're looking for net value always. Um, you have the tax rate, which is this percentage number. I know nobody can see this, but uh, it's a percentage number. That is that number multiplied by this number gives you the amount per year the taxes cost. And then all these numbers down here, which are fixed costs, the community facilities district, CFDs, the, the uh, cost of having the street lights on, those are all built into that part of the tax bill. Those are fixed. So you need to know those because if you have really high numbers of CFDs in a certain neighborhood, your valuation completely changes. It completely changes your buyer. Everything changes about your property. A lot of people um, bought properties in the last cycle. I even had like some, some vets in the 60s, 70s that we tried to talk out of buying stuff from KB that uh, ended up with six, $7,000 a year in additional taxes and they didn't have that kind of income. Uh, we found a creative solution. We told them to go outside and pick it and say KB discriminates against vets and they fi KB fixed the problem very quickly. Yeah. Uh, what's the estimated closing date of the transaction? Ask the seller, right? If you're dealing with the seller, ask them when they need to close. See if there's some flexibility there. You know, like you want to know if you can't put the money together in a couple of weeks, uh, if you can get an extra week or so. Like I have one right now that's a, a seller selling a duplex. He just, before Thanksgiving, that's all I cared about. So we had to put together a large sum of money for another project. We kind of let that one slide for a week and it didn't become a headache and then now we're closing that one. Uh, what's the market rent for the subject property? Uh, who currently occupies the subject property? If rented, what's the current monthly rent? And if rented, what's the ending date of the current lease? So what's the market rent for the subject property? This is the short, easy cheat, rentometer.com. So it's not the be all end all, but it'll get you in the ballpark. Put the address in, put the number of bedrooms, spit you out a number. It tells you exactly what the average or median rent is in the area. You can also click on these little sticks at the bottom and read individually which one is and in what the rent is at each one in the neighborhood. Kind of get you close. I just literally copy and paste that first one until I dig into it deeper. Uh, who currently occupies the subject property? Uh, if rented, what's the current monthly rent? Um, and if rented, what's the ending date of the current lease? So, Jesus. 
thing is sensitive or is not? Depends. Uh, this kind of all has to come from the seller. There's no way around it. Nobody else except the tenant, if you knock on the door, can tell you what the lease is and the tenant may lie to you about it. Heck, the owner may lie to you about it. But you sort of do the best you can with the information you got until you get into escrow. So I've got all this information now what? Um, this is the spreadsheet we use. Uh, all those questions that were in this presentation are on this side. All the math associated with them is on the left-hand side. And the middle column is where you put all the answers. It gives you the entire breakdown of the deal. So if you have a deal that you just want to see how it pencils, you want to, you want to sell it, so you give this to somebody else, so you sell it. Uh, you can change the numbers in it to get to your desirable, desired sales price if you want wholesale. If you sent this to a lender, they would lose their mind. They wouldn't know what to do because they got all the information they wanted in one swoop. I think I would, I, my head would explode if I, if I got this as a lender. Uh, it's got hard money costs built in if you want to use hard money, uh, joint venture, flip splits, all that stuff's built into the sheet. So the basic formula we use is 75% minus repairs uh, equals your purchase price. Um, you'll hear everything from 70%, 65%. I don't think anybody will say 80% minus repairs because unless you're paying all cash, it gets pretty tight. Uh, even, the, even the hedge funds are maybe pushing towards 82, 83, but you don't live on those kind of margins. Um, so the seller agreed to my price, now what? Because that seems to happen a lot. <laughs> People get me get the deal, and they're, I'm really excited, now I know what to do. So uh, different, different deals require all kinds of different levels of experience. The, the idea behind this presentation is to get you to where you can bring this to somebody else. Um, right now, you, you would put everything in that spreadsheet and then take it to someone and say, please help me with this thing. If you know what you're doing, great. Here's another tool. Um, but most people aren't going to be able to teach you this business in, a, in any reasonable amount of time. So find a mentor. I mean, that's what some of these meetings are about, right? Find a mentor, or find somebody who, like give up your deal. Instead of paying $50,000 for a class, give them a piece of two, three, four deals. Use their money, their risk, and then you learn from them, and then do it on your own. Uh, if you don't have somebody, uh, we don't do a lot out in LA. Pasadena area, I mean, you get into the seven, eight hundred thousand, a million dollar mark, we're out. We don't really do that price range. It's really hard for us to raise eight hundred thousand to a million for a deal. We just did it for eight hundred something thousand. It took us like two weeks of calling everybody. Uh, but if you have a deal that's in, you know, central LA, you know, around the five hundred thousand range, Inland Empire, whatever, give us a call. I'll be happy to work with you on it. There's plenty of people in here to actually. We get a lot of investors that come to this meeting. People that put money in our deals come to this meeting and me meetings out in LA. Um, yes? Valley? I don't even know where that is. Palm yeah. <laughs> Yes, because the price point's lower. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, do I have time to do this? Four phases of transformation? I got two minutes. Okay, so uh, how many people, I'm going to do this the opposite way. How many people have flipped at least one home they didn't live in or own at least one rental? Okay, we're not doing four phases of transformation. <laughs> uh, okay, the end of the presentation is get to work. Go out and write if you're looking for a deal at least 100 offers a month. That sounds like a lot, and you don't have a deal, you just found out why you don't have one. It's 100 offers a month minimum equals one deal. If you're good, it gets down to like 50, even 20. But if you suck, it's gonna take like 100. Go write a bunch of offers. Thomas, how many offers do you write a month? About 60. About 60. Thomas writes like 60 offers a month. Uh, I've been working with Thomas for a while. Uh, I don't know, what do you think we get a month? Like 300, 400 a month? Probably. It's like we're looking at three, 400 deals a month, and we, we're buying two to four a month. The math even works the same for us, and we're experienced. Anyway, get to work. Are there any questions? Questions? Good? All right, I'm done.
20 minutes to spare. Simple. Like, do you guys have a, a clear idea that you could actually just do due diligence? And this is not that complicated? This yeah, is not that hard? And you can reference the slides so you can just and keep checking. You can reference the slides so you, so you got your checklist right there. Mm -hmm. Or go to your website and download it. Uh, yeah, well, that's crg.email. We'll get you. Mm -hmm. By the way, he has a temperature. We're teasing earlier about being sick. Like this one showed up. Yeah, I, yeah. I wasn't there for two days though. Okay. But I, I made the commitment months ago. So I was here. Yes, you did.